Hi everybody! I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go over some medications that are commonly used to treat patients who have heart failure. So, let's get into it. The first one are ACE inhibitors. And the reason we're doing this one first is because this is often the first line medications that they choose. So, first med often used for mild heart failure. What does it do? It promotes vasodilation and diuresis. It helps to decrease our blood pressure and afterload. It helps to relieve the signs and symptoms of heart failure and slow its progression. It promotes renal excretion of sodium and water, and this is going to help decrease pulmonary congestion on the heart, so it's going to be a lot easier for the heart to do its job. And then what are some special things the nurse needs to know about these medications? We need to observe for hypotension, so a decrease in blood pressure too low, increased potassium, and if the patient starts experiencing a cough or a decrease in renal function. But these are kind of like the big special ones because they are usually like the number one choice if you're like newly diagnosed with heart failure and it's mild heart failure they're probably gonna start you on an ACE inhibitor. Now, some people cannot have ACE inhibitors, so they have something called ARBs. Let's talk about those. Angiotensin receptor blockers, AKA ARBs. These are our alternative for our patients who experience adverse effects to ACE inhibitors. And you'll note when we go through this that they sound very, very similar to ACE inhibitors. So the things that they do, they decrease the blood pressure in the afterload. They relieve the signs and symptoms of heart failure and help slow its progression. And the nurse should watch out for hypotension, increased potassium, and decreased renal function. So it sounds very, very similar to ACE inhibitors. So these are usually used for patients who are having adverse effects with the ACE inhibitors or the big other thing here, we didn't mention here, but we know it mentioned with the ACE inhibitors, the cough, okay? So these patients are less likely to experience that cough. So there might be some reasons that the person will be prescribed this instead of the ACE inhibitors. So just keep that in mind. This is an alternative first line medication for mild heart failure if the ACE inhibitors aren't working for them. ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, that's kind of the first line. That's what they'll do if you're in like stage one or classification A of heart failure. As it progresses and we're starting to become symptomatic in classification B, they're going to introduce beta blockers. So what do beta blockers do? They dilate the blood vessels, so cause everything to kind of like relax, which helps to decrease our blood pressure decrease the afterload, and the overall like cardiac workload of the heart. These are really good because they help improve exercise capacity, because at this stage, patients are usually starting to feel like shortness of breath and fatigue on exertion, so this is gonna help with that. And things the nurse needs to watch out for, the nurse should observe for hypotension, so too low blood pressure, bradycardia, so too low of a heart rate, dizziness and fatigue. So these are the things that the nurse would see and then these are the things that the patient might report being on these medications. So those are the first kind of lines of defense, right? We start with the ACE or the ARBs, then we go to the beta blockers. Now we're gonna talk about diuretics. Now let's talk about diuretics. Now for this video, I'm going to just be talking like in general about diuretics. If you want to talk about the like specific types, I do have a video on that, so I will put that in the description box below if you want to check that out. So diuretics, what do they do? They decrease fluid overload, so that's going to help the heart pump easier, right? It's going to decrease the cardiac workload of the heart, and it's going to help reduce those signs and symptoms of heart failure, like the shortness of breath, like the fatigue. Lots and lots of things the nurse needs to watch out for with these. So we need to assess their electrolytes, especially their potassium. We need to know their renal function, their blood pressure. We need to assess their lung sounds. We need to check for peripheral edema, their I and O's, and they're probably gonna be weighed every day. If they're in the hospital, they're gonna be weighed every day. 
The type prescribed depends on the signs and symptoms. So the type of diuretic doctor chooses to put them on is going to be very individual and dependent on how the patient is presenting and then also on how good their uh, kidneys are working, so on their renal function. And then those who have severe volume overload are usually treated with loop diuretics first. So that's just kind of something that doctor will decide. So just kind of diuretics in general, their whole thing is to pull off that fluid to help decrease those signs and symptoms of shortness of breath and fatigue and make life a little bit easier for the patient who's having those symptoms. But there's lots and lots of things the nurse needs to check for um, depending on what type of diuretic they're on. So it's really, this one is very individual and depends on the patient. So the first big ones, the ACE inhibitors, the ARBs, the beta blockers, the diuretics, these are the most common ones. These are the most like frequently used. You will see them once. The other ones I'm going to talk about are maybe not used as often, or maybe we used to use them a lot back in the day and today not so much, but they are still important and I still want to talk about them. So let's get into those. Now let's talk about digoxin. And this one is a little bit like, okay, we don't use that anymore. Some people might still use this one. It's not as commonly used, of course, because of the risk of digoxin toxicity, right? Um, and they're gonna look at like the benefits versus the risks of giving this medication. And for most people, they're gonna say, no, we're not gonna give it for this. But for some people, they might. So it is still important. It is still a heart failure medication that you should at least familiarize yourself with. And if you want, I did make a whole video specifically on digoxin, not related to heart failure, but just about the medication itself. So what does it do? It increases the strength of the contraction, so of the heart muscle contraction. It has a tendency to slow the heart rate, and it can help relieve or decrease signs and symptoms of heart failure. Important stuff for the nurse to know, you want to assess the patient's pulse before you would give this medication. And this is only used for systolic heart failure. And in fact, if you were to give this to a patient who had diastolic heart failure, it would make it worse. So again, not commonly used. And then I wrote that down here too. So not commonly used due to the toxicity risk. And then of course, the diastolic heart failure, it would make it worse. So you may or may not see this used, but it was used and it still is out there, it's still available. So I just wanted to make sure like I covered it here in this video. So that's digoxin. Naturetic peptides. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, that's because of the lab test, the BNP, right? The diagnostic test we do in heart failure to see like, you know, how bad it is. So this is something that can be administered. This is kind of special. This is something that's administered IV. And when I was looking more into it, the most commonly used one has actually been discontinued and they don't make it anymore. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't make other ones, but just, you know, you may or may not see this or you might see this rarely. Um, this is just kind of like a special one. So it's administered IV. It causes sodium loss and vasodilation. This is not used for, you know, everybody with heart failure. These are people who are having like acute exacerbations. These are people who have like dyspnea and rest. So are stage three or four or classification C or D. Okay. So this is something that's used for, you know, pretty sick people or people who are pretty advanced in their heart failure. It helps to decrease both preload and afterload. And it also decreases the secretion of norepinephrine. So this is natriuretic peptide, another special one you may or may not encounter, um, but it does still exist and it is kind of a big deal. Inotropes, those are another um, classification of heart failure meds that are actually pretty big deal, pretty serious. So these are used for hospitalized patients who are very, very sick and they are given IV. So what do they do? They increase the force of the contraction of the heart muscle which therefore increases the cardiac output. They're only for patients with severe dysfunction and they are given IV. They improve the heart pumping and maintaining the blood pressure. But these ones are actually very, very scary. You want to use them with caution because they do have a high mortality rate. So doctor may or may not even choose to use these. And the reason for that is because 
you know, really they're just doing their job a little bit too well, right? They're causing the heart to contract and pump a little bit too much, a little too well. They can send the patient into tachycardia, which will increase the oxygen demand of the heart, which could cause arrhythmias or myocardial ischemia, that kind of stuff. So scary, scary stuff. But these are only used for people who are very, very ill. So severe dysfunction people. So I wanted to mention those. And then the last one I want to mention is not technically a medication for heart failure, but it might be a medication your heart failure patient will be on. The last med I want to talk about are anticoagulants. Now, these meds aren't really supposed to be for heart failure. They don't treat the signs and symptoms or anything like that. But a lot of patients who have heart failure are also put on anticoagulants. And that is because they have other things going on. So they could have a history of an MI, so a heart attack. They could have, you know, like structural problems or valvular deficiencies in their heart. They could have arrhythmias. So lots of things that put them at risk for having clots. So a lot of times our heart failure patients will also be on anticoagulants, even though the anticoagulants, their job is not to treat the heart failure. So that's why I want to talk about it for just a sec here in this video. So there, for those who have a history of clots, um, special things we need to know. We want to monitor our bleeding times. Um, the patient is at risk for bleeding and bruising, so that's something we need to teach them. They need to know that. And depending on what type of um, anticoagulant they're on, they need to get their blood studies done regularly. So teaching them not to miss appointments, that's a big one, that they need to come in and get those done routinely. So this is just like a special little one that I wanted to add to this video, not necessarily for heart failure. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.